My roster of local talent faced their biggest challenge ever this week. We return to the hardest MyGM challenge where we're trying to finish the season 500,000 fans ahead of second place, playing on the hardest settings with only a roster of jobbers. No superstars and no legends are allowed to feature in our shows whatsoever. We have our work cut out in this insanely hard challenge as we're only 155,000 fans ahead of second place. It's going to take huge results all season long if we're going to reach that half a million target. And we start week four with the worst news we could ever see. Not only that, it's actually somehow worse than I could have ever imagined. We progress to week four and see the exact thing that happened to us in season one. Mick Foley played his Cactus Jacked power card against us. This power card guarantees that two members of our roster that appear in this week's show are guaranteed to get a long-term injury. Last year, it put Jackson Smooth out for the season. This power card is obviously bad and hard to deal with, but why is it worse than I could have ever imagined? Well, I didn't actually know this at the time, but I found out after the week was complete that he didn't just apply one Cactus Jack card. You see, in season two, you get two lots of power cards to use, or at least I did in this save. It confused me a little bit, but I was grateful to receive two lots of my stamina recovery and fighting champion cards, but it seems that after taking a disliking to us last season, Mick Foley absolutely despises us now for some reason. He used two Cactus Jack cards on us, or at least I assume that's what happened, because we wouldn't just be getting two long-term injuries this week. Oh no, we'd be getting four long-term injuries. As if managing a roster of local talent with extremely low popularity isn't hard enough, I'd now have to figure out a way to manoeuvre around what I thought at the time was two guaranteed long-term injuries. Last season, what I did was sign a whole load of new local talent and essentially write the week off, but I didn't want to do that this time around. I had regrets last time because my roster became so large that it became too difficult to manage everyone's popularity and expectations. But with some white hot rivalries and our first premium live event, SummerSlam, happening next week, some matches could be too much of a risk to take. Before trying to figure out this mess, I checked my inbox to see if there were any other pressing matters that I had to attend to. Kurt Angle, currently in second place with SmackDown, wished us luck for the season. I'd like to say the same to you, Kurt, but I wouldn't mean it. Chuck McWagon is angry with us for his string of losses, which continued with a defeat to Triton last week, and tells us that it has to stop. And he's essentially telling us that he must win his next match or we'd have to face the consequences. But would I be able to deliver on that? And Trixie Gambit is furious that Tyler Breeze interfered on her opponent's behalf as two thirds of our jobber's first stable hell to pay faced off against Penelope Perfect and Maya T. Kirk last week. Whilst Trixie was unfazed in the match and went on to claim victory anyway, she's taken a hit to her morale as a result of feeling attacked. As I tried to figure out how I'd work my way around guaranteed injuries, I first decided to retaliate. I went to my power cards and found anything I could possibly use against Mick Foley. There was a Vito random superstar card that I used to make one of his superstars miss SummerSlam next week, and I applied a double cost card to him as well for good measure. That should hopefully make him think twice about messing with NXT again in future. I looked at my roster and my empty card for the week, and I just didn't know what to do. I knew that signing a load of new local talent was a mistake last season, but I felt that throwing the week with four singles matches and less popular stars was probably the right call overall. But with a challenge so difficult in this season, one that I was already facing a huge uphill task with, I knew I'd have to try and be more creative. I couldn't just do what I did last year. So I decided to try something unique. I set an open challenge. It doesn't matter whether you were already on the NXT roster or if you were a part of NXT's amateur feeder brands, you would be invited to turn up and put your body on the line in this week's show. I was clear, multiple members of this week's show will get injured due to various circumstances with the ring and the match types. I obviously didn't tell them that Mick Foley had put a curse on us, not crazy, so everyone that would show up would truly know that they are taking a massive risk in order to try to push their careers. It would be an opportunity for local talent to try to prove that they have what it takes in a week where our biggest superstars are likely not to take any risks. But who knows, maybe even our biggest stars will want to rise to the occasion to show exactly why they're the best. The fans also knew that they were turning up for a surprise open invite week. None of the matches were confirmed or revealed beforehand because some of the matches haven't even been confirmed. It all comes down to who wants to be brave enough to leave the backstage area and make their way down to the ring and who was going to be the first out. As if our injury risk wasn't high enough already, this would be a tables match. 
they'd have Mick Foley and the finest mahogany to deal with too. The first out, well I'm not surprised at all to see Stacked McSlacks making his way to the ring. He's really proving that he doesn't care about risks or people's opinions this season. But who would his opponent be? Would it be a new challenger? Wait, surely not. It's Jackson Smooth. He went down like a sack of spuds with a season ending injury when Mick Foley played his Cactus Jack card in season one. People said it was a career ender, but here he is risking his life once again for the purpose of our wrestling entertainment. And probably because his new rival Stacked McSlacks is in the ring and he wants to take every opportunity he can to slam him through a table and try to work towards a potential future title shot. Both of these guys are pretty over with the fans right now, but who will win? It's Jackson Smooth. What a man, what a performance. It's rated four stars by the fans who can't believe Jackson would take that risk again. The rivalry between Stack McSlacks and Jackson Smooth grows, but will they both stay injury free? We'll have to wait until after the show to find out. Maya T. Kirk then takes to the mic to do a charity appeal. She's raising money for the air ambulance, which is a fitting appeal considering the likelihood of an air ambulance being needed at tonight's show. The fans respond and agree it was a great appeal, despite Maya's lack of promo skills. Who's going to be the next out in our open invite week? Is that Bobby Marquis? It is! The punk rocker, and the only thing worse than his attitude is his body odour. Bobby, surprisingly, actually made one appearance for NXT last season in this same week and won, meaning he's the only member of the NXT roster with a 100% win record. Of course, the records don't really count unless you've made a minimum of three appearances, but he's undefeated nonetheless. And who's going to take on the challenge of facing an undefeated wrestler and risk injury at the same time? It's Jerry Sweat. A crowd favourite from the amateur scene, it seems like Jerry Sweat is finally trying to take his chance on the biggest of stages. Is he going to put on a good performance here? Is he going to do enough to retain a permanent spot on NXT? Is he going to break a leg, literally? Jerry Sweat wins and the fans go wild. They loved seeing him put the stinky boy Bobby Marquis in his place. It was rated a one star dull match, but the fans don't seem to care given the circumstances. But is it going to be one of these two that Mick Foley tries to send into an early grave? Sammy George then takes to the microphone to call out Maya T. Kirk and says that the air ambulance company she was raising money for is a scam. I'm not sure about that, Sammy. She was doing a good deed and the same can't be said for you. The fans couldn't believe it and they thought the promo was embarrassing and I have to agree, have some shame. But Maya T. Kirk was so offended by the accusation that it sparked a rivalry between the pair. Who would be featuring in our third match of the evening? The first person out is... The Specialist, Adrian Williams. We saw him feature sparingly for NXT in Season 1, but he didn't manage to win over the fans enough, despite finishing with a record of two wins and two losses, because he only featured against other low-level jobbers. He returns with a new social media influencer gimmick after recently appearing on a reality TV show. Can he redeem himself with a good showing this week? He is putting his body on the line in the riskiest of weeks after all. We wait to see his opponent. It's John the Fish Herman, the man from Scandinavia with an impressive beard, but an even more impressive rubber boots and gloves combination. And fighting in jeans. You have to respect it. He's come straight from the lake to try to take down Adrian Williams. And John the Fish Herman wins from pond to performance in just a few hours. A staggering 1.5 star performance from the man from Norway and him and Adrian are feuding with each other. But will it be one of these two that picks up an injury? There's only one more match to go before we can find out what damage Mick Foley has done. Finally, it was time for the main event. Are we going to see any more new faces or are any of the existing roster going to be brave enough? First out, it's our female tag team champ Ali Brawler. Like Stacked McSlacks and Jackson Smooth earlier in the show, she's being extremely brave as she could miss SummerSlam, a premium live event that she was almost certain to be featuring in. But who's she going to be facing? Don't tell me we're going to see her rival. We are! It's Jodie Garcia. This is a level 2 rivalry. Doesn't Jodie Garcia know that Ali Brawler is an Extreme Rules specialist? These two aren't the most popular stars on the roster, but the fans are immediately taking a huge shine to them thanks to the fact they're taking a risk in a week that will guarantee long-term injuries to what would actually turn out to be half of the stars that featured in matches this week. The underdog Jody Garcia nearly wins it. Ali was stunned and Jody looked certain to get the pin. These two went at it like those two giraffes I once saw fighting on David Attenborough. 
and Jodie Garcia does eventually win it. Her and Ali brawl up on an amazing four-star performance. They put their bodies on the line, they've developed their rivalry further, and the fans won't forget what these two have done tonight in a hurry. This is going to work wonders for Ali and Jody's popularity and their long-term prospects for potential title shots at NXT as well. Now all we need to do is find out the results from this week and find out which four local talent members got injured. We'll see if we manage to retain many fans, or are we going to see a big loss in the ratings this week to set us back massively in this challenge? We managed to get an amazing booking rating thanks to our fantastic opener and main events. It was great to see some of our existing stars putting their bodies on the line. With four new jobbers appearing for the first time this season and a missing promo slot, we managed to gain just 29,000 fans. That is a worrying result. It won't be great in comparison to our rivals, and now we just need to hope that they didn't do too well. SmackDown gained 47,000 fans, NXT 2.0 gained 30,000, barely more than us, and Raw and our rival Mick Foley gained 43,000. You might have won this week, Mick, but I'm going to make you regret the decisions you've taken. Our lead at SmackDown is cut to 113,000 fans. As the week ends, Mick Foley responds angrily to me that I applied a couple of power cards to him with the Veto Superstar and Double Cost cards. Really, Mick? You're annoyed with me? And to make matters worse, he swears to get revenge, even though we were the ones acting in retaliation to his attacks. I guess we've got our own feud going outside the ring again. And then it was time for the moment of truth. Who picked up injuries? Who made the biggest sacrifice for NXT? And how bad would the injuries be? Let's find out in the next episode of Jobbers Only.